Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and today I'm coming to you with a live video tutorial for the Countdown Crochet Paper Chains. Obviously, we're not crocheting with paper. We're going to be using yarn to make some wonderful sort of like the paper chains that I know I made a lot as a kid, but we'll make them out of yarn. And this does a couple of things. It makes them totally reusable, so you're not throwing all of that paper away year after year. And, of course, you can add to it, add new colors every year, make it longer every year. But it also gives the opportunity to customize these links. What I did is I turned mine into a countdown, so you could use it as a candy-free advent calendar or anything like that. You can see I added these really great numbers. These are all from the Moogly Crochet number set, but there's also the Moogly alphabet. There's the Moogly lowercase alphabet. So you can do all kinds of really fun things with this pattern. Other appliques to remember special events. And on top of all that, the actual decor piece, you can see here, I designed it with these great big easy buttons. Combine these buttons with numbers and letters, and you've got a great learning toy for preschoolers who are just learning to count their alphabet and to manipulate things like big buttons. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we need to make this pattern. But before we do that, I'm going to make sure that we are live so I can see your comments and questions here when we're done. So give me just a moment here. I'm going to refresh my little laptop in front of me and always takes a moment just to make sure that we are really streaming. I see we are. So I'm going to click on that. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for watching and tuning in today. We really appreciate you being here with us. All right. Great. We're up. So let's get to it. Hi, I am Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and today we are doing a tutorial for the Countdown Crochet Paper ch Chains. You can see those chains right here. Again, this is a great green alternative. You can turn it into a toy, you can use them for decor year after year, and just have a lot of fun with them. So let's come on down to the hand camera and we'll take a closer look at what we've got here. All right, get them turned right the right way around. Now. Here you can see I've added some numbers to mine. We've got a 20 there, four, three, two, one. You can, of course, also leave them plain, or you can use the alphabet. The Moogly Crochet Alphabet is a great option. The Moogly Lowercase Alphabet, Greek letters. And as I say, you could use anything with these. You could really applique them and make them your own. You could definitely add little memorable things for year after year. Now, each one of these links takes only 35 yards of Bernat Blanket, which is the yarn I used. You'll also need a US 8 millimeter crochet hook. That's a USL 11, 8 millimeters. This one is by Susan Bates. You'll also, if you want to go ahead and add those letters, I recommend using Bernat Softy Cotton with an F 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. That's going to make the right size letters to fit these links. But of course, you can play with them however you like. So, one additional thing you'll need besides the yarn and the hook, of course, is the buttons. Each link uses two buttons. These buttons are one and five eighths inch across. So pretty big buttons there. But that's what makes it so easy to manipulate for little hands. Finally, optionally, you may want to use some tacky glue to glue on your letters. If you are going to be using this, or your numbers, or again, whatever you're adding on, if you are going to be giving this to little ones, you might want to go ahead and sew them on. I did do that with my number one. It's trying to hide from me right there. So you can sew them on if you prefer, and that will be more secure. But if, like me, you like speed, a little bit of glue goes a long way, too. You just need to give them a little bit of a chance to dry. So let's go ahead and set this aside. And I'm going to pull up some scrap yarn of my own. And we'll make one of these links together. So I'm going to find my N. There we are. And as always, I'm going to start with a slip knot on my hook. There we are. And then we are going to chain nine. So we yarn over our hook, pull through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, when we're making chains, we don't count the loop on our hook, we just count the ones we've made. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then we are going to skip the chain closest to the hook and single crochet in each remaining chain back to that first one we made. I like to work into the back hump of the chain, but you can work into the other portions of the chain if you prefer. So I'm going to skip the one closest to my hook and come to the next one. Go right under that back hump, 
pull up my loop and make a single crochet. Go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up my loop, and yarn over and pull through two for another single crochet. And we're just going to continue doing this all the way across. Now, since we chained nine, but we skipped that one that was close to the hook, we should end up with eight single crochets at the end of this row. So we're just continue working back towards the slip knot here, and then we'll count our stitches together. There we go. So we've worked into the last one. I like to pull up my loop and put it over my finger there to secure it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now we've got our first row made. Now, as we continue on with the pattern, the next rows, rows two through 25, are all exactly the same. We chain one, turn, and single crochet in each stitch of the previous row. I need to pull up a little bit more yarn from my skein here. Now, as I mentioned, this pattern, this link itself, only takes 35 yards of yarn. So this absolutely is a great stash buster. You can go through all your little odds and ends of uh, super bulky yarn here and make up your own links pretty easily. And as you can imagine, this it goes pretty quickly. Now, if you're a beginner crocheter, it won't be quite as quick, but it is a great beginning project. Just make sure, if you are a beginner, that when you get to the end of every row, you want to take the time to go back and count your stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So make sure that way you'll have completely even size because you want the size of your link to be really straight. So that's what we do. We continue going. We chain one, turn, and single crochet back in the top of every stitch. Now these are standard single crochet stitches, so we are not going under just the front loop or the back loop. We go under both of those two loops at the top of each stitch. Let's go ahead, for those who are beginners, get a little bit closer and make a really low, slow single crochet. We go into the stitch right there. We can see it opens up and we go under those top two loops. We insert our hook. We yarn over, which means we bring our yarn over the top of the hook. Pull it through the stitch. Now we've got two loops on our hook. We yarn over again and pull through those two loops. We insert our hook in the next stitch, yarn over and pull up our loop. Oops, <laughs> yarn over and pull through those two loops right there. We just keep making single crochets, eight in each row for a total of 25 rows. So if you can imagine, we keep making 25 rows. This is going to get longer and longer and longer until we come to row 26. So when you go to count your rows, you'll want to look closely and you can kind of see there's one row there one row there and one row there. You want to just kind of look for those little loops and where they're worked into each other. This can take a little bit of practice. So if you are having trouble counting your rows, just make sure that you've worked until it's about three times as long as it is wide. Then you're ready for row 26. So for the sake of time here, I'm going to go ahead and skip to the instructions for row 26. For this one, we chain one and turn. Then this is the one row that's different. We're going to single crochet in the first two stitches. So we go into that first one and make our single crochet. One, go into the next one. There's two. Then we're going to chain three. Now I chained three because I wanted to get around this specific size of button. If you chose a different size of button, then you will, may need to crochet a little, maybe an extra chain if it's a little bit bigger, or maybe only two chains if it's a little bit smaller. So that part you'll need to test out a little bit with your buttons if you have them handy, you can kind of slip them in there. But if you're getting the same size of buttons as I used, three chains should be just about right. So we simply go ahead and start chaining here. One, two, three, and then we're just going to come right back down here and single crochet in the next four stitches. We're not going to skip any of them. Just go right to the next stitch and make a single crochet. So there's one, two, three, and four. Okay, so for row 26, we have two single crochets, chain three, four single crochets. Now we need to chain three again for the second button. One, two, three. So again, if you've used smaller buttons, 
You'll want to change both of those loops to the same size, bigger buttons, add more chains, but just make sure those two are the same. Then we come back, you can see we've got just those two stitches left. So we just go right in those last two stitches with single crochets, one and two. After that, we're ready to break our yarn, so we do need to pull up our scissors. There we are. And you can secure that end by yarning over one last time and just pulling it right through that final loop. Give that a tug and it won't go anywhere. Now after that, we do need to weave in our ends. Let me grab a yarn needle here. For big thick yarns, you need big yarn needles. So a yarn needle, of course, has a big eye. This is a bigger yarn needle. So I'm going to go ahead and thread our yarn right on here. And then I can use my yarn needle to just bury this end. That's another term we use for weaving in our ends. We're just going to find those stitches and sort of stick the needle in between in the middle of the stitches here so that it's sort of, you can see it's pretty well hidden. Maybe it sticks out a little bit right there. So we don't like that. Let's try it again. We'll pull it back out. See if we can't hide it a little better there inside those stitches. There we go. That's a bit better. So now we'll just pull that right on through like so. And then to secure it, it's important to go back in the other direction. This is a really fuzzy yarn, so that will help a lot without keeping our ends from coming undone. But we can't go exactly right the way back through or it'll just, of course, pull out everything we've done. So we need to kind of go around another loop here before we head back in that direction. And we can go back that way or we can kind of jump into another row. Whatever feels good. We just want to make sure that as we use and play and store, these links year after year and event after event that that end isn't going to work its way back out. So when you feel like that is in a good place, we simply trim it off. I like to give it a little extra tug before I cut. And I almost threw away the wrong part there. And then that little end will sort of sink and pull back down into your fabric. Then of course we do the same thing with the other end. Let's get our yarn needle right on there and just hide those ends right in there. There we are. So there's one direction. If it comes off the yarn needle like that did, no problem. Just whoop, send it back on there. There we go. And then go back through the other direction. Could be a different row, could be the same row. We just want to work a couple different directions so that life doesn't cause it to come out of our fabric. Once again, I'm going to pull up on that just a little bit so that when I cut really close, the end will sink back down into that stitch. Now, the final thing we need to do is sew on our buttons. So if this were full length, we'd have a little bit more length to do it. So let's go ahead and pull up one of the ones we've already made here. I'm just going to unbutton it. You can see that's where those chain three loops come in so handy, just the right size for these buttons. You want it to be tight, but not too tight. And here we have one of these full length. You can see this is the end we started at and worked our way right up there to row 26. So after you've made the full length, you will want to sew on two buttons. Now the placement of the buttons is pretty easy. I just fold it up and eyeball it. You want to sew them onto row one here. You can see they're sewn into row one. And I did not even bother finding matching thread for all the different colors. I just used white thread. I think it looks very nice, but if you wanted to, you could seek out a matching thread color for your buttons or for your yarn, whatever you prefer. So I just sort of held it up here and said, okay, we'll just sew that right under that one and right under that one. And then of course they match up really well. So the basic formula for these, if you do want to use a different yarn um, or a different hook size or really mix it up or even a different stitch pattern, if you're an advanced crocheter and you want to do something fancier than single crochet, the key really is to make it three times longer than it is wide and then add an extra row or two. You'll want an extra row to sew the buttons to, and then probably an extra row for your loops because those are going to overlap. But in my experiments, three times the length, three times the width for the length seems to be what works out to make a really well-formed paper chain. So after you've got it all made, that's when it's time to add whatever appliques you want to add. Um, you probably want to add them to the same side that the buttons are on so that they face out, of course, when you are doing those. Here I have a five from the Moogly crochet numbers that I've made but haven't attached to any of these yet. When I make my numbers, I used um, a thinner yarn. This is a three weight yarn and a smaller hook. 
you can see it is a much smaller yarn so that it would fit on this project. So if you want to mix it up again, you may need to experiment with that just a little bit, but you want to get something that fits on your link. You could put it this way if you're doing just one number or letter, but if you want to do more than one, you'll probably have to fit them, uh, fit them on here across. Of course, you can also purchase pre-made letter and number appliques if you prefer. So after you've got your appliques made and you've got your links made, then you've got a choice. You can either pull that yarn needle back out and use some of this yarn to sew it on, or you can pull out some glue. I'm a big fan of tacky glue. It is very commonly found and it dries nicely clear. So this is a great one to use for projects, uh, especially projects involving fabric. So to glue it on, let's go ahead and do that together. We'll go ahead and glue our five onto this one. I am going to take my glue here, get it open, live gluing. <laughs> let's see how this goes. We are going to give it a good squeeze here and I'm just going to do it, of course, on the back of my number. And after I made this number, I did block it just a little bit to get the shape really nice. And then I, when I blocked them, I blocked them upside down so that the back of the numbers were facing upwards. And then I used a little bit of spray starch and I just sprayed very lightly on the back of all those numbers before I took them off my blocking board. And that gave just a little extra body to the applique. It's something I really like to do when I make appliques is use just a little bit of spray fa fabric starch because it just stiffens them up just that little extra bit, helps hold the shape until you've got it attached to your item. So you can see here, I'm just going back and forth with the glue, dabbing it on there. Very carefully, get the lid back on, set that aside. And then I'm just going to sort of eyeball it here. I actually like to sort of count in, we've got that last row, sort of one, two, three, four, five, sort of this is about the middle here. And then I will use that to gently start putting down my number. And I typically start from the bottom so I can get kind of right along the edge there, get it placed and really help it get its shape as I lay it down. There we are. Give it a little extra pat or two here. And then of course, we'll need to let this air dry. I would recommend letting this dry for probably at least an hour or so. And as I say, if you're going to be Letting little ones play with these, you may want to take the time, even if you've already glued them, to go back and little add a little extra stitching around the outside just to make sure they're not going to come off on anybody. After that, of course, this one needs to dry for a little bit, but after that, of course, you can just add it onto your links, keep going. They just go right through the other. You can see I've got another one right here. They're just so much fun, so simple, and a really great beginner project that is fun for you and the kids. So let's go ahead and come back to the other camera. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial for the Countdown Crochet Paper Chain. It is, as I say, a great beginner pattern that is absolutely ready for you to customize however you like. So thank you so much for watching. I'm just going to check our comments now. So we've got Ocean Girl and Gracie. Hi, you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in and being with me today. And thanks for everybody who stuck with us for this demonstration. And I hope you'll check it out. If you'd like to follow along with the written pattern or get the links to all those letters and numbers and things, you can find all of those on mooglyblog.com. Have a great day and have a happy holidays. Bye, everybody.